One week ago, Reality Check told you about one reason why the Republican presidential nomination is far from locked up. But at least one blogger says Ben got it wrong. Did he? The answer in a Reality Check? Reply all. The issue at hand, our reality check on Rule 38 of the Republican National Convention rules. As I told you last week, way down at the end of the RNC rules is rule number 38. That rule consists of only one sentence. No delegate or alternate delegate shall be bound by any attempt of any state or congressional district to impose the unit rule. So what is the unit rule? Well, that rule requires that all delegates from one state or congressional district are required or bound to vote as a unit. After that story aired, a blog post titled Urgent, Ben Swan and Matt Larson are wrong about Rule 38 and delegates being unbound based on RNC rules. Now, the author here does a good job of raising some very valid points. At the heart of his argument, the states get around this rule by not binding the entire group of delegates. They always have at least one delegate unbound, and it's usually three unbound delegates. So they are not enforcing a unit rule in any way. Therefore, Rule 38 does not apply to the argument. And that is true. For instance, in Ohio, we have 66 delegates, and they are bound delegates. But of those 66, there are three RNC delegates who have the freedom to vote however they choose. Therefore, the blogger correctly states that this allows the RNC to get around the unit rule. But the blogger may not be entirely correct. I stand by our argument that it very well may be that none of the delegates when they reach the Republican National Convention are actually bound. And it isn't just our theory. An extensive article at fairvote.org has taken a very close look at this issue. And the truly important issue is this. The author states that the RNC rules provision on the unit rule make it clear that delegates are not bound to vote according to how most delegates from their state are voting. They go on to say, delegates can vote according to their own judgment and conscience. So, what is all of this based on? Actually, it's not our interpretation of the RNC rules or fairvote.org's interpretation. It is the interpretation of the RNC legal counsel. In 2008, this issue came up. It was actually in Utah, where a delegate did not want to join with the rest of the state and vote for John McCain, and instead demanded that his vote be cast for... Mitt Romney. McCain won Utah with 62% of the vote in 2008. But here's the most important part. In that delegate's fight to cast a dissenting vote was this statement over the specific issue. Jennifer Sheehan, legal counsel for the RNC, plainly stated in a letter to Nancy Lord, Utah National Committee woman, several weeks before the convention, the RNC does not recognize a state's binding of national delegates, but considers each delegate a free agent who can vote for whoever they choose. And the National Convention allows delegates to vote for the individual of their choice, regardless of whether the person's name is officially placed into nomination or not. And that statement is about as clear as it gets. The delegate process was actually designed to entrust a group of voters with the power to override the popular vote in each state in order to ensure that the best candidate is chosen. Now keep in mind, the Republican and the Democratic parties are not government agencies. They're private organizations, more like clubs. So voting within a party is not bound by election law. And that's what you need to know. The national media isn't telling you something very important. This past weekend, Congressman Ron Paul swept the delegates in two states, in Nevada and in Maine. At this point, all the delegate momentum appears to be on his side. So, much of what we've been telling you for months has now finally been mentioned by several national outlets. Bloomberg Business, U.S. News & World Report, even radio host Mark Levin this week have finally started to hint at the idea that, well, maybe Tampa isn't going to be inevitable after all. Stay tuned. And that is Reality Check. If you'd like to make your voice heard on the story, head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching Ben Swan WXIX.